Hello there. My name is Ron Rogers, and I'm going to relate to you the dreadful and horribly embarrassing tale of the T-33 that's on a post outside the Air Force Test Pilot School out at Edwards, California. Now the T-33 is at one end of the test pilot school. At the other end of the test pilot school is the NF-104. It has a little rocket motor on the end of it. Actually, I'm obscuring it with my little cameo thing here, but there's a little rocket motor on the end of it, and it could go up uh, to very high altitudes with reaction control system controls. It was used in the test pilot school. Now again, here is the T-33 on the post outside of the Air Force Test Pilot School. Now, if you're going to have your picture taken as a graduating class of the Air Force Test Pilot School, do you want it in, uh, taken in front of this? Or do you want it taken in front of the NF-104? Well, obviously you agree. You want to have it taken in front of the NF-104. It's a lot nicer aircraft. Now let's talk about the tail of this aircraft, the T-33 on the post. This was put up there in the late 70s. I was a chase pilot out at Edwards at the time. The T-33 was used in the uh, test pilot school primarily for spin training. But it was also used for airborne pickup training and uh, just general proficiency flying. Now, doing an airborne pickup this is a situation where you take off as the chase aircraft. You take off, come around in the pattern, and as you're coming around final turn to uh, final, you call the test aircraft to release brakes. And you time it such that when the test aircraft is just becoming airborne, you are in formation uh, position. And the purpose of this is to be a safety chase or a photo chase where you're taking pictures and you can see the gear retraction and flap and slat retraction and things like that. But you notice here that the T-33 here is, is in the clean configuration here. And at the time, back in the late 70s, when you're doing this airborne pickup, you were not required to have the gear down. Well, interesting part about the uh, doing an airborne pickup is you, you have to be very accurate on your timing of the call of the brake release of the test aircraft because you want to be in position and you don't want to get too slow. Now, the danger that can occur if you get too slow is that you can belly the aircraft in the dirt next to the runway. And in the case where the gear is not down, it's even more embarrassing. Now, this aircraft was bellied in, gear up, slid to a stop. Set in the uh, corner of a, a big hangar we have out there, building 1600, a huge hangar, and it sat there for a while, and they decided, well, you know, it's, uh, it's not worth repairing. They were going to the A37 for spin testing, so tell you what, let's just uh, repair it put it on a post outside in front of the test pilot school because it's kind of historic aircraft. So the mechanics uh, cleaned it up, re-skinned uh, the belly there, and uh, they made it uh, so it could sit on a post, and they uh, put it up on the post on the outside of the test pilot school. Now the mechanics, uh, no malice was intended to this, but they thought, well, we'll just put the name of the last person who happened to fly the aircraft um, on the canopy there. So they put Lieutenant Colonel not to be named up on the um, canopy rail there. Well, of course, everybody knew that he was the one that slid it to a stop in the dirt. And uh, uh, it was kind of embarrassment for everybody who looked at that go, oh, why is his name on the aircraft? Well, the people knew why his name was on the aircraft. So he was he was very upset about this. He went to the uh, uh, the commander of the, uh, the test base, uh, General Stafford, and complained about it, but uh, General Stafford, in so many words, said, well, you know, it, it's appropriate, your name should be on it, you were the last one who flew it. Well, that didn't set well with Lieutenant Colonel not to be named, so he actually went out there one night with his um, uh, station wagon and a ladder and uh, put it up there, and he took some black paint and he painted over his name. Well, that got in our local newspaper, the Desert Sun, that somebody had come out and defaced the aircraft. So they went back and they put his name back on it. Well, if he wasn't kind of the laughing stock before this, 
he was really now the laughing stock. Well, when prominent people tend to leave Edwards, we have we have a Christmas party and we have a little get together and we have a fun little time where we show some uh, what might be considered interesting or humorous flight test uh, videos. And we also give out a few plaques. Now, the uh, test ops commander was uh, giving a plaque because Lieutenant Colonel, not to be named, was leaving. And he talked about, you know, Lieutenant Colonel and how uh, one of his air favorite aircraft to fly was the T-33. And, of course, we flew mainly off runway 22 out at Edwards. And he thought, well, we wanted a, a little plaque here with the T-33 on it. And we wanted to put it on the favorite runway, but we thought... If we put it on the runway, you couldn't see that it was runway 22, so we put it off to the side in the dirt. And then he turns the plaque around. Of course, everybody can see the T-33 off in the side in the dirt. And, uh, of course, the room breaks up in laughter. And uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, not to be named, comes up, uh, accepts the plaque, and leaves. And it probably uh, went in the trash shortly after that. So back to the T-33. Well, it's becoming obvious that this is an extremely sore point. General Stafford says, well, I'll tell you what. He looks in his logbook and he sees that he flew this T-33 uh, back uh, in the early days. And uh, he was a captain at the time. So he says, okay, I'll tell you what. Put my name on it. So the T-33 has the name of Captain Tom Stafford on it. And that is the dreadful and embarrassing tale of the Air Force Test Pilot School T-33. Thank you for listening.